Hi guys, today we'll be going over a vector for loop. Um, so let's start off by reading a question. So the question reads, a row vector v of random integers in the interval minus 10 to 10. So anything inclusive of minus 10 to 10. So it can be minus 10 and it can also be 10. So in that range, minus 10 to 10, can be generated via this function here, which is randy minus 10, 10. 1n. So if I just make this longer, this is how the function looks. So all this function is saying is to generate a random vector uh, that includes these values anywhere, any value between minus 10 to 10. And the size of that vector has to be one row and n columns. So this function will generate a random vector of values between one, minus 10 to 10, which is 1 by n. And we're told to complete the below script such that it fulfills the following conditions. But before we get into that, I'm just going to quickly show off how um, this uh, Randy function works and what it does. So if you just go into here and run section. So we've typed in v equals Randy and the interval here and then 1 by 5. So it should generate a 1 by 5 vector with random integers uh, that satisfy this condition. So if you run section, so now we have 6, 10, 3, minus 10, and 7. So all the values are uh, minus 10, 10 inclusive, and also have this 5 value, so it's a 1 by 5 vector. Okay, so let's just uh, comment this for now, and move on to, this, to the question itself. So the question says, complete the below script such that it fulfills part A, it generates v for a given n. So let's just address that. So let's just address the first part of the question. So to do this, what we do is we want to ask the user to input a value of n. And then with that n, uh, MATLAB will generate a vector v. So to do that, we first use the input function here, which allows uh, the user to give the value of that variable. So it's just n equals input, and then in brackets you just type in apostrophes, whatever you want to prompt the user. It just has to be a um, a phrase that makes sense. So we want to give a positive integer n, because it wouldn't make sense to have a negative n, right? Because you can't have a, a negative length uh, or a negative, yeah, you can't have a 1 by negative something uh, vector. It wouldn't make sense. So you would have to have a positive integer n. Um, otherwise it would it would break uh, and now with that n um, MATLAB will simply just put it into this randy function and it will assign that vector the variable v okay so now this will be a random row vector so we're going to quickly test that so if you just run section here it should be able to uh, prompt us so it says give a positive integer n if I type in 3 it will give us three values which satisfy this condition minus 10 and 10 if I run it again and type in 7, it will give us 7 values uh, which satisfy that condition. So that's all good. So that works. So let's just quickly clear my command window. Um, and now we have to see the next part of the question. So it says part B, it counts and displays the number of negative elements in V. Okay, so let's address part B. So for part B, we want it to count the number of negative elements and displays the number of ele negative elements in that vector. So first we need to um, initialize the count. So to initialize the count, we need to just pre-allocate a variable with a value of zero. So I've used C because C is probably the best way of like remembering for a count, count variable. So I've said C is equal to zero and that just stays there and now we're going to add on to that so to satisfy um so now we have to create a for loop so this for loop starts off with the index n and it ranges from one to n and we've already inputted n so it knows the size of the vector so now we're going to put a condition here which um suggests that we're looking for a negative element so we're going to check for a negative element so to check for a negative element a negative element is less than zero so we're going to just just going to put a condition there v of k uh, is less than zero 
So if this condition is satisfied, I want my lab to count. Now, the command for counting is, if that condition is met, we just want C to add one onto itself. Okay, and every time this occurs, it will add one onto itself. So essentially, it's counting the negative elements. And now I'll address W of K is equal to this later on. So now that's part um, B. And actually, let's just complete, just do it um, completely. So it says it counts and displays the number of negative elements in V. So we can use an F for an F statement to actually show the number of negative elements by just typing in number of negative elements. Um, is percentage.f and the percentage.f is just a placeholder for the C so C will be the number of negative elements because we're counting it right here now I also assigned um, my ve my vector v to another letter called w and that's because I want to compare my previous vector v and my new vector uh, w so part C which I haven't read yet it says it generates and displays a new vector where the negative elements have been changed to zero. So that's the reason why I assigned um, the vector V to W. So at line seven, there's two vectors, V and W, which are identical. But after this for loop occurs, we want vector W to be the one that has the negative elements changed to zero. And that's quite simple. So if there's a negative element, we want it to count it, and we also want to change that same very element to zero. And that's done. So because uh, the, 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 the negative element would be in the same position, it would change that very element to zero. And now we also want to display it in a nicer way. So we can just create an fprintf statement and do new vector. And notice how, um, the vector is outside of the fprintf because fprintf can't display a vector like that and when you're displaying numbers you can have it inside the fprintf statement so let's have a look at how this works so let's just do a one by five so we're going to prompt uh we're going to just input five for n so if we run section and do five So here we have a 1 by 5, so n is equal to 5, v is equal to minus 10, minus 8, 7, 4, and minus 4. The number of negative elements is 3, right, because you have minus 10, minus 8, and minus 4. And those very same elements are now 0, 0, and 0 in our new vector w, right? Um, yeah, that's the end of the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed and learned something. Uh, thank you for watching.